Hello and welcome back to another mini let's play of a new game. My name is Saiken and today we're diving right into the Lamplighters League, a much anticipated game that recently has been developed and uh, promoted on Steam and I got my uh, hands on the newest version of the game. It's a full release currently available. I do have a couple of um, codes uh, associated to the game which you can get a nice little discount of if you are interested in the game. So before we however go to the codes uh, that you will uh, find in the comment section down below, I want to talk uh, shortly about the Lamplighters League which is a fun little XCOM-esque game in a 1920 environment. I would describe it as Indiana Jones meets XCOM uh, with a little bit of a Call of Cthulhu uh, in there. So it has elements of mystery, definitely a couple of elements of magic in there. Very Indiana Jones focused in, the ter in terms of slapstick uh, comedy combined with uh, action adventure and XCOM-esque uh, because it does have indeed tactical combat. So the very uh, short story is uh, that this gentleman here, Locke, is in a race, in an anthropological race uh, with the League of the Banished, uh, which apparently is a league of three individuals that uh, are colluding together against him. And in that very race, they are trying to find a mysterious tower, apparently kind of an old... Uh, uh, an old uh, uh, tower with artifacts in it and as far as the story has told us uh, so far uh, that tower uh, is found by the opposition but not by Locke himself yet so he would do what every good uh, sportsman would do he's now trying to sabotage the uh, uh, others in order to uh, stall for enough time for him to find the tower now, that this is where the fun part of the game comes in. All of the other uh, individuals at the table are actually mercenaries that are working for him and we're going to take a look at them in a second. The enemies, the uh, League of the Banished, uh, is a conglomerate that really reminds me about the Chosen, of War of the Chosen. Uh, one of them is a female uh, assassin warrior of sorts, very fast, has deadly melee weapons. Another one of them seems to be an industrial uh, gentleman uh, and very rich individual, so I could imagine something akin of the hunter. And the third one was kind of a mysterious occult figure, so it could be the warlock all over. I have nothing against uh, borrowing ideas, specifically if they work, but you can imagine those uh, three "quote unquote" chosen of uh, uh, ch uh, chosen of the banished league are going to be uh, present in some of the missions. Let's look at the agents real quick, which is a bit different to XCOM. In this game, you do have um, set agents. You got Ingrid, who's the brawler. Uh, she's uh, the muscles of the group. Although I don't understand why she couldn't be kind of the stealth character. But I think in modern games, uh, there's a bit of gender fluent, uh, fluidity uh, included, and that means Ingrid is the muscle. All right. Anyways, Ingrid uh, is a melee character and potentially closest related to the Templar. So uh, she does have a couple of abilities, which we're going to um, take a look at uh, in a second. Um, you get uh, a lot of uh, skill trees. I'm not going to go through that in the mini let's play, but essentially uh, she starts with a couple of uh, uh, starting abilities. Uh, she does have a passive ability that allows her whenever she knocks someone unconscious, she gets an action point. Every single agent has two action points, so it's very similar to XCOM in this regard uh, during the combat. And essentially she gets uh, a death from above, uh, quote unquote. Uh, or Reaper is potentially the better uh, description. So Reaper is her passive always on ability, which is quite cool. Every single agent has a uh, ultimate, a super ability that they can use once. In Rita's or Ingrid's case, it is Onslaught, which is an AOE slam attack where she knocks everybody down. Very good. 
Um, on top of that, she uh, can uh, get Evade, which is a one-time parry, so to speak. So again, very much like the Templar um, that she can uh, that she can activate. The cool part about it is she can activate the evade ability uh, irregardless of hitting. So you can always do that if you want to spend one action uh, for it. So that's Ingrid. Um, Ingrid uh, does indeed have a lot of melee abilities. And her basic weapon are these weight and gloves. She is joined by Latif, uh, aka what was his uh, name? Oh yeah, the Gentleman Jin. Uh, that is an interesting name. And Atif is really kind of a stealthy guy. He has a pistol uh, and he, his role, as far as I'm concerned, is more uh, the role of a, um, of a Reaper-ish uh, kind of character, where he is by far the best stealth. Um, and he uh, does have a couple of different skills. So his passive skill is whenever he moves, he gains one um, evade ability. So there is definitely a bit of a skirmishing going on where it is very beneficial for him to continue to move uh, to get the evade. Evade is like parry, so when enemies shoot at you the first uh, time, they automatically miss, which is ultra strong as far as I'm concerned. His ult uh, ultimate ability is the decoy. He becomes invisible, uh, puts a mimic beacon down, and the enemies are attacking the mimic beacon. So that's also cute. Uh, his range attacks are fine. I would really say it, it's very, very similar to a Reaper as a class. And then we got Eddie. Eddie the Saboteur um, or the Dual Pistolero, six shooters. Um, he is an interesting uh, case. Uh, so uh, Eddie has a passive ability that whenever he crits, he gains ammunition. That way he doesn't need to reload as much. And Eddie has a um, signature ability where he effectively has a cone and shoots onto every single character. And I started skilling Eddie with light em up, which also attacks up to four uh, targets. So imagine kind of a face off um, version, um, a full pistolero sniper, minus the sniper, he just has the pistol. And that's very much how the class plays so far. So I already gave you a rundown of what the characters can do. I'm sure you are interested in what is this game really about. And what the game is about is I've, uh, we're joining the game in, at the point where I've just done the tutorial. So we are, so to speak, at the first real mission after Locke has uh, given us a speech to his grandiose plan that he fights against uh, the League of the Banished. And we got our first and only mission which is this one here. We would get one int, which I think is intel. Uh, we get uh, 75 supplies. Good supplies can be used in order to um, purchase, for instance, bandages, flash bombs, smoke bombs, or fire uh, fire bombs, and I'm sure pretty, uh, pretty much other stuff as well. I don't have armors yet, and I don't have weapon mods uh, so far. So only thing that we do have is pocket uh, items. But the characters can use trinkets or accessories, they can use armor, they can use weapon mods and apparently even more uh, as the game progresses. And then there is another mechanic uh, which is the draw mechanic, underhand draw. I honestly don't know what it does yet, uh, so we're going to find that out uh, together. Uh, I'm playing this blind together with you. So. Uh, we got some intel available here. Not sure what that resource does, but it seems to be valuable. We got more supplies, which is always great. And uh, we got six skill points. And those skill points can be used for the skill trees that I briefly showed here. So uh, the only skills that I've used so far is with uh, Ingrid. I have a skill uh, that uh, we have, uh, that we have uh, gone into, which is called Stick and Move. Uh, which you move up, uh, the enemy gets blinded, and afterwards Ingrid gets a free move action. So really trying to make it more like a uh, like a Templar. Um, and then I got, gave her the push kick, because why not? Push kick sounds great. On the other hand, uh, I skilled light him up, uh, which is attacking four targets, so that's face off. Um, in XCOM terms, and we got the good old bullseye, 
which deals extra uh, damage against marked targets. Marked targets, I assume, is the same as in XCOM, where a target is easier to hit. Anyways, you get those skill points for more skills, but I have already mentioned quite a bit. We haven't really seen any action so far, and this is a mini let's play, not a mini monologue. So today we want to do Operation uh, Trial Run, Sabotage, destroy a generator built in the Mato Industries, uh, from automobile to home radios and government military uh, contracts. Uh, Marto Industrials has its finger in every pie, and Marto is one of uh, the uh, one of uh, the opponents in India. Uh, difficulty two, whatever that means. Plus, uh, Phenomena the Faceful. This mission introduces a new enemy type, the Scourges. Okay, we don't know what those are yet. So, can we uh, change agents? No, we only have the three starting agents and this is going to be fun. Do we have any other equipment? No, we don't. Well, Saiken, I think you just got to start the mission. Locks Journal! My three new agents succeeded in retrieving the undrawn hand despite Zurina Nicastro, that is one of the three enemies, interference. Now they are on the route to Marteau Industry Compound with orders to destroy a piece of machinery. Uh, my informants are traced to the site. Machinery that, if I'm correct, plays a role in the company's mysterious project Crossroads. Almost as important as the mission itself is the question, will the undrawn hand respond to right. their actions? This generator Mr. Locke wants us to destroy is just up ahead. From stealing blind cards to destroying machinery. Locke is a strange one, that's for sure. Enough wind jamming. Let's do this job and get out. All right, let's look at the game itself. Uh, the game uh, in its normal form allows you to have an out of combat option. This is very similar to every day we fight. Um, or other games uh, that allow you to first and foremost use kind of pre-combat setup uh, which is fun you can um, during this phase switch through the characters you can ungroup them uh, which allows the characters to do individual stuff which is good and then you can essentially group them together every single character outside of combat does have a limited amount of super abilities. Uh, these are not the ultimate abilities, but they are kind of combat openers, so to speak. And in uh, the case of Eddie, it is Shock Mine. Shock Mines uh, will uh, start to electrocute water and oil and will shock a single person that steps onto them. Ingrid has a bruiser ability, which is cool because she just charges through whatever is in her way, uh, basically knuckling everything down. And we got Latif, who does have the sucker punch. If he sneaks up, he can essentially take out enemies immediately, which I appreciate. Fanatics willing to die for the banished court and its magisters. Acolyte ceremonial daggers are razor sharp, and their dedication to the court is absolute. All right. Well, that's a problem. Um, so our sneaky, sneaky frontliner will do exactly that. Eddie, on the other hand, uh, takes a bit of a position up here, and Ingrid, as a frontliner, needs to frontline. All right, Ingrid. Shock troops and flankers, the court scourges move quickly to stun and overwhelm their enemies. All right, these are new enemies, so I don't know them yet. Uh, hence, I also don't know a lot of their tactics. Bullet holes, a riddle, the brickwork, um, mementos, uh, war, and of great and small. Okay, so one of the passive abilities uh, that our scout has is uh, this invisibility, where he effectively becomes invisible. All 
right come a little bit closer come a little bit closer I just want the fourth one almost there I think we can't hit four. Well, well maybe we can. Time to earn our bread. All right, so you can see we immediately knocked out four of them, which is fantastic. That's a good. Uh, that's a good start. Um, so we're now in the actual combat. Let's uh, start with the one uh, that is the furthest away, which is Eddie. And Eddie could shoot, but he does not have any target in range. Which is really a shame, because the only thing that he can then do is uh, overwatch and keep kind of this area clean. Not great. Don't like it. Uh, maybe we're just moving a little bit closer. Should have kept him. Should have kept him down there. All right. In the meantime, we do have one, two, three, four, five enemies, and these guys seem to be reasonably strong. So uh, we might want to use our decoy here. Um, we do have two a action points, as you can see, and I would like to start with uh, a stick and move ability this is the hit this guy is now blinded we got an extra move which we can use in order to get here uh, that's uh, cooldown of two and we're going to do a nice little evasion In the meantime, I think I'll save the decoy for now. This guy being blinded is an option. Or, alternatively, we're moving to here. That gives us uh, the, uh, the evade and we're overwatching all right our evade is gone which means uh, from now on uh, we would be able to be hit and definitely our overwatch up here didn't do anything at all so that's very unfortunate good moving up a bit closer with Eddie and Eddie has the light him up ability. Could hit up to four targets, but only has two in range, which is not great. So what we're going to do is instead of lightening him up, um, although, hmm, nah, I think we're just going to dual shot. One over here, one over here. Bam, bam, Eddie starts to go to town good we're setting everybody up here do that again starting with uh, normal strike killer instinct can trigger twice around Carry on, We're still keeping our two AP. Uh, three enemies are left, uh, so I think that uh, cries out for the first ultimate. As you can see, both of them are now knocked down. And we are going to put 
evade on against that third guy there. In the meantime, did you see that? We're starting to move over. All right, so far that worked uh, surprisingly well. Eddie moves up, or rather down, because I want to hit both of them. Or respectively, I just want to hit this guy here twice. Might as well, because We're now moving up, getting a dodge going. Hit him one more time. And we got this here going. Killer instinct number one. Moving into killer instinct. Oh no, that was, uh, that was the extra movement. All right, never mind. We are going to put evade here. This guy is blind. All right. What? Why, why do they get another turn? Okay. Apparently the shock trooper can take twice. That is nasty. Oh, we're out of ammunition. <laughs> yeah, good job, Saiken. Well done. Eddie moves up. And Eddie takes a double shot here. Nice hits. I like that. No hard feelings. Good. Killer instinct. Uh, solid hit. Uh, we're doing a push kick. That leads to knockdown, and we are going to do evasion. Both of our frontliners do have evasion, so we're fine. Should have used the push kick much earlier. Good hit. I like it. Got the job to finish. Let's go. Fabulous. So, uh, you've seen the first engagement. We lost some hit points with Ingrid. Uh, we're going to heal her up with a couple of bandages. Might be able to find some more over time. And we could uh, for sure have used uh, these electric batteries in order to make our life easier. So. You should always look out for um, some of the environmental little gimmicks that the game is offering you. Hold on. There's definitely something to pick up, but before we're doing that, uh, let's stay here.
Good. And let's use his special technique. The sucker punch. As you can see, enemies are now aware. And unfortunately, we're being spotted out. Never mind. All right, uh, time for us to move up. We get evasion here. Nice little shot. I practice. Ooh, that was a good hit. That was a very good hit. Moving up with a push kick. Followed up uh, by a second move. You took your eye off the prize. This guy is blinded and we're moving into full cover and are taking evasion. All right. Good. Easy. Improves our position. Good, let's pick up 10 supplies. That's not bad. Muffet voice reverberate of the sin steel, then stop abruptly. Let's move. Not bad. I'll take it. Okay, so, hmm. Lots of small uh, supplies here. Got a rooftop outpost. That definitely is the next area. Before we're moving there. Let's double check what else we can do up here. Okay, so that's just two entrances towards the rooftop. Keep up. Let's climb up there together. And maybe we can shove wait, all three wait. of them. All three of these guys uh, together. Recruited from the disillusioned masses, enforcers impose the banished court's will with semi automatic rifles and satchel charges. The most numerous of all the court's forces, but no less. All right, so it is the banished court, by the way, not the court of the banished. Hundreds of wooden crates aligned in the best warehouse, each stamped. Okay. Cool your heels. Let's take out a couple of uh, these guys. Sucker punch. All right, it's one more down. Yep, please move in a different direction. Never mind. Never mind, I want to get one more of them down, but unfortunately that's not how it's going to work. 
That is a great option. We're definitely going to start with it. Let's go. Start running. <laughs> Fantastic. Followed by light them up. One, two, three, and four. Okay, let's try that again. One, two, three, yeah. four. Very good. Okay. Um Sometimes I amaze even myself. Yeah, well, that was a great hit. I must admit that was pretty damn good. Let's push kick him out of cover. Let's part ways. Very nice. Let's um hmm. Would that hit him is a good question. quite a kill mm, I was hoping that they would be down so down um, so much down that we would be able to get them and kill them um, I like our odds a bit better now blinded which is good and we got An option to move the question is to where full cover here we are being flanked not great but okay yep wow more enemies Ingrid uh, gets killer instinct. I like that. Do we have a push kick again? No, we don't. Not yet. Not enough ammunition. Oh boy. Our worst Reloading. nightmare, we need to reload. One hit. Ingrid moves up. Gets another action point. Yeah. 
Didn't hit him. That is unfortunate. Okay, um, listen, I think we're still better off going back here into full cover than to put evasion on. Oh, they do have grenades. Oh, they do have grenades, not good. Okay, uh, yeah, well, uh, listen, time for us to move and to dual shot here and here. Good enough to go this way. Look at you. Lots of enemies. And we're out of ammunition, so really what we need to do is... Um, move over here, put the decoy down. And whilst we're invisible, we can reload. I need to still watch the um, the ammunition count much better. Okay, so what can we do with our melee character? How about sucker punching this guy here? Blinded. That's a good start. Moving over here. And then we're just going to put evasion on. Enemy now goes for the decoy. Mostly. Okay. Bullseye. Uh, devastating shot guaranteed to hit uh, has and deals double damage against marked targets. Well, light him up is the first name of the game. One and two and three and four. Let's try that again. Light him up. One, two, three, four, and everybody's flushed out. That's already good. I like to see that. Now we don't have enough ammunition, damn it. All right, another reload. Basic strike. Isn't that a lovely Regaining sound? AP. That's good. Continuing with uh, basic strikes. I charge extra for this. Good, Latif over here. Needs to go for cover. Although the melee characters, are they really caring about our cover? Potentially not. And there is still a decoy, so might as well go for damage. I 
I'm tired of your face. Nice little knockdown. I like that. And kill one more. Alright. I should still go for the... Oh no, oh no. Okay, we're in a big mess here. The decoy just didn't have enough hit points. All right, one and uh, metal effect two. Just want to focus fire. Good hit. Got some ammunition back. Love it. We're switcher redo wing. Get that extra AP. Good. One hit. Keep him going. Oh yeah, that is that was a nice one. All right, bullseye. Hits him. And there is still one enemy remaining. I don't know which one. Let's put up evasion. Oh, right up there. Okay, cool. Good, we're getting evasion, so that's why we can stand in the open here. Uh, we will reload on top of that. Double move over here. Moving over, I want uh, the bandages and we're putting evasion up as well. Enemy only has one ranged attack. Unless, of course, uh, they are getting reinforcements. Just what I need. Takes up bandages. This is fine. Heals herself. Okay. Double move. Double dodge. There we go. Okay, cool. Nice, really good hit. Let's try that again, shall we? Told you I could handle this on my own. All right, move up. And we are rushing in, giving ourselves some evasion. That way, two of our characters currently do have evasion. And that should be it. Finally. <laughs> okay, cool. Come on, come on. Some more lore. I am looking for more bandages. Let's take some bandages with her. Very good. 
can switch, uh, of course, do think this generator does? Dunno. give other Looks bandages. Like Not a bad hand. A mode of fate. Okay, that seems to be a new card. That's Wait nice. Up. One more uh, thing that I haven't shown you is the recon mode. I have not yet used it that often, but you can actually use it in order to kind of understand what can theoretically ha uh, happen. I think this is the generator that we need to destroy. Okay, well, we need to escape. I believe I might have made it a little bit more difficult uh, than originally intended by simply going uh, in uh, there and breaking everything. Um, Alright, come on guys, don't... Uh, that's a bit of a... bit of a negative aspect. Not uh, They are not always running as a team. Anyways, can break these walls for, uh, for a bit of a secret. Second wind. I don't know what that is, but it looks good. And we got ourselves some supplies. Um, the thief here can climb and therefore get it uh, to areas that others could not go. Keep up. Okay, so where's the escape? Where is the escape? Oh, up there. All right. My bad. So yeah, overall tough fight, but I think I, I could have handled it a bit better. I could steal the eyeliner off your eyes. Okay, we can't get a smoke bomb. Um, tell you what. what Bandages into that using be. them, fire bomb, and or taking That's the smoke that. bomb. All right, Marcho's cool. Marcho's generator is scrap. Now let's get out of here. I guess this sets back the Bandit Sports plan for the tower. Never stop. Ask Locke if you're so curious. Me? I'd rather get rich than get wise. Victory! Very nice. We got one intel, uh, 75 supplies, and a couple of skill points. Skill points are resource shared between all agents. Uh, mm, and missions ground skill points. Yep, we already found that out. That's true. Card reveal. The undrawn hand. The undrawn hand reveals a new fate. After every mission, the undrawn hand edges the agent's experience onto its once a blank cards. Place these cards onto the agent's uh, tableaus to change the way they fight. Okay. Stack cards of the same type on the tableau slot to increase their effectiveness. Discard uh, cards to receive ink, which can also be used to bolster undrawn hand powers. Collect modes of fate and the missions to unlock better cards. And we got the Weaver, which is... 
Enemies in the target area lose speed. Last two rounds. And we got the revelation. Debuff uh, inflicts blinded on all enemies in the target area. Uh, AoE 3, range close. Okay. When I focus, I can hear. And this is that close range, the Weaver. Yet, Good. Sure. Why not? That reminds me a little bit of Hard West with the whole cards and uh, getting more uh, getting more abilities out it's of it. Done, Mr. Luck. Mr. Marteau's generator is a smoldering wreck. No sign of Marteau himself, though. A shame. I was hoping to get a look at the great American industrialist. Be glad he wasn't there. Marto Industries makes a ton of stuff, but it's their weapons division that keeps the lights on. And I hear old Trace personally field tests his prototypes. But your sabotage set back his operations. My informants have confirmed it. Yeah, that'll keep him out of the tower. Though I'm still unclear on the how. I don't think you'd believe me if I told you. Try us, why don't you? At the top of the tower, at its crown sits an energy source greater than anything else on earth if any of the three court scions got their hands on it there'd be nothing they couldn't do this power is both dangerous and unstable and taking control of it requires preparation my informants are tracking the court's progress and they grow closer by the day that is why your sabotage missions are so critical they buy us the time we need to reach the tower before the court can complete their preparations. I set their plans in motion, but we can't hold off the court and find the tower at the same time. I need more agents. Who and where, Mr. Locke? There are two, each in different parts of the world. One is a combat medic, Anna Sophia Rodriguez. Mm -hmm. The other, an assassin who goes by Celestine. Both are on the court's bad side. Specifically, the court's third leader, Wolfram Strum. It's taken me months of searching to find them. And now, with Strum bearing down, we only have time to rendezvous with one of them, not both. Fortunately, extracting one agent should buy the other enough time to slip Strum's notice until we can find her again. The details of both women's whereabouts are here on the map. Let's get to work. Cool. All right. So uh, a little bit uh, from the uh, from the mission design, it feels like uh, XCOM Chimera, where you do have certain missions on the map, and uh, then you need to make up your mind oh. what you want to do. Hey, boss. Just inspecting the casks. <laughs> uh, well, it's to the lamplighters. Oh. The oh, All right, so we don't want to get too drawn into the discussions. I want to show you some more of the agents. So we still have a lot of undrawn cards here. Got some intel, but we also have the ability to unlock some skills. And Latif is the only one who does not have uh, had his basic skills. So. The Thief's ability debuff uh, blinds uh, to all enemies in an area. Affected enemies um, prioritize attacking the Thief uh, with a big AoE. I like that. Uh, we can then get uh, the decoy up to 170 hit points. And <clears throat> oh, that would uh, just be two rounds of decoy. Running shot, range ability, a hit and run attack that deals extra damage and evades uh, stacks on Latif. That's actually good. Latif gets a free move action if the target dies. Uh, Latif gets an additional evade. That actually is a really, really good ability. So we're going to go to that. We still got three uh, points left over which means we could have a level two ability on any of the agents. Um, so 
So one of the things that we could do is hot pursuit for Ingrid. We need Ingrid to be a bit more, a bit more uh, tanky, I would say. This here is Blade Storm. Question is, do we want that? I think it's not a bad idea. Performs immediate attack on an adjacent enemy performing a hostile action. Can activate once per round. Let's try that. Sounds like a good idea. And we could recruit agents. We'll go for that in a second. Looking good out there, champ. Definitely going to get one more bandage uh, bandages uh, as that typically seems to be the item of choice debuff consumable applies marked and blinded to everyone in the area that's not bad burning or incoming attacks have a bigger chance to miss i think we're just going to give him um, you know what? Let's give that to her because frankly she has no range attacks and a, a bit of a range attack would make sense. All right, we'll cut it here for the first um, of the two parts of the mini play Let's Play series. I will kind of uh, say the obvious if you like the Lamplighter Sleek if you think the game is fun and is interesting to watch you need to bombard the comment section and the like section to show me that you really appreciate it and then I'll do a full uh, playthrough of it uh, the game definitely seems like a lot of fun as far as I'm concerned and I would uh, love to give it a try but I need your support in that so let me know do you like it do you want to see more of the Lamplighter Sleek if that's the case, then give uh, then be loud and proud down in the comments. Take care and have a good one. See you soon. Bye bye.